Hey, 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 closet busters, come on and gather around. It's time once again to kick down those closet doors of life. We're here to escape our BS, explore our fears, and elevate our self-expression. I'm your host, Rick Clemens, bold move expert and coming out coach, and I'm going to take you to the party, the pulpit, the wake, and back to the party of living your life uncloseted. So come on, grab hold of yourself and get ready to step out, step up, and step in to living your truth as we explore more stories, tips, and tricks for living your life uncloseted. Now let's get to the show. Hey, 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 closet dwellers and bold move makers. It is time once again for Life Uncloseted. I'm your host, Rick Clemens. And you know what? Sometimes you just got to realize that somebody else is trying to come out and be the gay white Oprah. So we're not going to we're not going to let that happen. We're going to have a little competition here today because, you know, some people just gifted with that gift to gab like me. And hmm, this other one that I for some reason I'm stupidly bringing on here to compete with me today. But um, we're two Oklahoma girls that just love to gab. We love to help people. We like to help them get through the stuff. And what do you do when you have that gift to gab and you just know you got to do something bigger than yourself and you like to act and everything? Well, you move to Beverly Hills, or in his case, you move it. Beverly Hills adjacent, and you still do all that stuff. So um, I love this guy we met through podcasting, because that's where all the fabulous people meet is through podcasting. And I thought, you know, I need to have Matt, which I don't call him Matt. I call him Maddie, but actually I call him girl. We just, we just sugar, we just sugar snap each other back and forth when we're together. So you guys have us for 30 minutes. We are going to talk about bold moves. We're going to talk about unclosing ourselves. We're going to talk about therapy. And I don't know, we don't know where we're going, but we know, well, we know we're going. So without further ado, and whether you want to go with us or not, you're on this ride. Welcome to the show, my buddy, Maddie Marr. Hey, girl. Sugar, that was probably my favorite introduction I've ever experienced in my life. Well, that's because I am the next gay white Oprah, honey. So. Sugar, you live that truth. You live I it. do live that truth. You but, live it. Yes. But, I don't uh, want to start a network, so you can do that. I don't either. No, no. We, we, need, we need to find another gay person to start the network, and then we'll just go both be on it. You know? I don't know. So, the older I get, I'm more like, I kind of want to be the gay white gale. Because I feel there like you go. fun without the stress. Yeah, she just follows along and says, no, you look fab. Just go do it. And I get to go follow along. Although she didn't get to go to the royal wedding. I didn't know. Oh, no, Gail was there. She was doing her was CBS stuff. Yeah. yeah, she was covering it, so that was a little bit different. You know. I know. She didn't get to go march in with the rest of the queens. <laughs> she didn't. I was jealous. I'm thinking of, I'm debating growing a beard because I have a red beard, but I don't yeah. think I'm going to look like Prince Harry. Mm-hmm. Well, you I'm never not. know. You I'm never not. know. I I'm don't know. If, if, if Megan was really drunk, she might have mistaken you for it. Maybe. 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 I'm like two cleanses, one boot camp, and a stomach flew away from Harry. <laughs> so. Oh, girl. <laughs> okay. I, I, I don't know if our list, my listeners are ready for this because, you know, <laughs> we just, we could have some, we should have been doing a podcast together all along because we can just play off each other like constantly. We but, uh, should. It could just be called. Queens on iced tea. Our son, there you go. <laughs> exactly. Queens on sweet tea from Oklahoma. Because <laughs> we can go there in a heartbeat. That's we the thing. And heartbeat. for those of you who don't get the sweet tea reference, well, just Google it. I'm sure Google somewhere. It. Just Google it. That's, a, we, that's how we help our, our clients. We just Google shit. <laughs> well, hold on a moment. I'll be right back. Yeah. Google. <laughs> okay. So here's what you need to do. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, exactly. we may have we may have the certificates and the license to say we could be therapists, but really Google is our true certificate. So there you go. But, um, well, I appreciate you. Appreciate what you do. It's a big, you know. Come one thing that I do understand too, coming from Oklahoma, is that to live uh, to live a life uncloseted, it's not it's not harder or easier than anyone else's experience. But I, I was just telling you, I just went back literally. Yep. Um, I just got back yesterday and for going for a week and it's just, I love my family. They're very supportive of me. I love my friends and they are as well, but still I do forget what it's like to be um, just, you know, in this, every time I go, there's Mm -hmm. somebody that either it, while I'm in town pulls me aside and says, I've got my cousin, I've got my brother, I've got my sister. They just came. How do I deal with this? And, And questions that I don't, even think about anymore that I think everybody just knows they're exactly. asking me. So it's it. So for you to have this show and doing mm-hmm. what you're doing, sugar, that is, that is a miracle right there. And you know, it's interesting, Maddie, because 
that's where my reach is. It's in those middle states. It's in those places yeah. where people, you know, when I look at my stats and, and I see, oh, yes, everybody thinks I'm fabulous. And uh, I didn't say hunk. I'm sorry. <laughs> thinks I'm fabulous <laughs> and hunk. I did purposely say that, folks, okay? Because we can have fun like this. Um, but it's interesting because it's always the places where I know there's the struggle is real. And I'm not yeah. saying that to be catty. The struggle is real. And yeah. I love you know, no disregard for Oklahoma, but there there are places in our lovely country and world where this struggle is huge and mm-hmm. it's not easy. Mm-hmm. And you do forget, you do forget that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, mm-hmm. so what what inspired you to go? Okay, I'm going to go do the therapy thing, and then you're an actor, and then of course now you're this podcaster and all this. What was the thing that really inspired you to go? Okay, first I'm going to go become a therapist, get my psychology degree, all that stuff. What was the driver there? Sugar. I mean, I say all the time, I've got a real bad case of gay DD. I mean, it is diagnosable. <laughs> so um, whether it's women's eyeshadow, helping people, or black penis, I'm there. So, um, <laughs> Hello, holla. Well, uh, I get distracted. Yeah. But um, no, my, I, for me, you know, when I look kind of at the thread of my life, uh, it's always been stories that are, are I'm attracted to. So whether it's watching a story, whether it's watching a musical, uh, whether it's watching a talk show, whether it's uh, even doing commercial, it's always about the story. And so Mm -hmm. that's kind of the thread for me. But for me, I just, you know, I think that I grew up a singer and an actor and I thought I wanted to do that. And I am, but it it, it got me to California, but it really was, um, you know, singing and acting really almost kind of like a a shadow career. Mm-hmm. I say shadow career. That's from the book, um, from the workbook, uh, the artist way by Julie right. Cohen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Recommend that to a lot of people. But I realized just because I was good at singing doesn't necessarily mean that's what was the most mm-hmm. fulfilling thing for me to do. Exactly. So just the more I started singing and acting, I thought, you know, I really, what's always been my little kind of secret, my secret hope or my secret dream has been to have like a talk show because I loved Oprah. I love Sally, Jesse, Raphael. I mean, I loved all these women and, um, and Donahue. I loved him too. And so that's just, but you know, you get, you kind of just don't know how to step into that world. So right. um, that's kind of, you know, I, that was started to think of, I started, I'm a turtle on some things. I move quickly, or at least it took me a while. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I just, I started to go that direction. And then oddly enough, I, um, I started volunteering for the Trevor Project, yeah. uh, which is Suicide Helpline for LGBTQ youth. And um, I, I don't know better, but I enjoyed it. Not that I enjoyed talking to people that are suicidal, but I enjoyed right. being of service. And that kind of what led me into therapy. And I really thought I was going to go into the therapy route. You know, I started that camp and I really mm-hmm. thought yes. that was the way I was going to go. And that was it. And it was just one of those things where a friend said, you know, you have a good face for commercials. You should take this commercial class. And I did it thinking, well, I'll make a little extra money. Right. I did that and it picked up and I started moving and then I got a producing partner and then we started selling shows and it just kind of, you can age out of being an actor, but you can't age out of being a therapist. So it's just right. kind of been that way. Mm-hmm. I know. And that's where I let Dear Maddie, I wanted something for Dear Maddie of, um, I think it's really important no matter what anybody's doing in life, really try to find something that you don't have to ask for a lot of permission to do. Mm-hmm. You don't have to get a lot of yeses. And in the, you know, in entertainment business, I've got to get 10 yeses before I can even right. move an inch on a show. And I thought, I just want something I'll do it in my living room. And it's just, I feel like I, I affect somebody's life, at mm-hmm. least one person mm-hmm. that day. And that's kind of why and, I do Dear Maddie. And we don't have to ask anybody's permission to say, fuck you. And we're going to talk about black penis. So there it is. You know, we just sugar we do it. There's nothing to tell us. No, no except exactly. for maybe my boyfriend, who's going to say, <laughs> really, you have to bring that up. Really? You have to yeah. go there again, you know? Yeah. 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 But, you know, hey, then you have somebody like mine that, you know, you've been together 17 years and he finally realized it doesn't do any good to bring it up. I'm still just going to say shit. So. so we've only been four years, so he's not there yet, sugar. Okay. I'll, have him, I'll yeah. have him call you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll have him call my husband and, and be my <laughs> husband and give him a crash course and just keep your mouth shut. It doesn't give <laughs> So there you go. <laughs> oh, so just that in and of itself is kind of interesting that here you are, this lovely little ginger white boy from Oklahoma, and then now you've got this handsome, beautiful black man boyfriend. Now that in and of itself in Oklahoma could be scandal on so many fronts. So many fronts. So oh, I- yeah. It you know, it's interesting. I li- so I just 
it's really about, you know, Harvey Milk talked about, you know, when he would wanted so many people to come out in the 70s and 80s, he talked about come out because the more people know you, the more that they will, you know, relate to you and it will help. Absolutely. Our and it is so true because even with my family, I've been together with my boyfriend for four, almost four years now. My mother, my father, everybody loves him, loves him, loves him, loves him, which is, you know, a real switch being that my father grew up. I mean, one time we had a stray dog and it was a white dog with a black head and he wanted to call the dog the N word head. Right, we didn't right. name it. Of course, my mother said no, but still for my father to come to that to now, my brother says people have made gay jokes or black jokes. Like my father's a plumber like on yeah, the job yeah. and my dad will get really pissed at them and like throw down his tools and they don't know. They're so confused. Mm, right. So I've seen the growth, but it still is, you know, it's, I think it's, it's it's fine personally, but it still is, you know, it it makes it a little limiting of where I think I would necessarily feel safe live because just mm -hmm. coming back to Dallas, in the middle of Dallas, this guy picks me up in Uber and he's a farmer and we're just talking about stuff and he said something about farmer. He's like, you know, I don't like to half ass stuff. And I said, Yeah, he's like, Yeah, he's like, I just don't want it. And he said the N word and he said, Rig it. And mm -hmm. I kind of looked at him and I just thought, Wow. I it just it's shocking to me and right. I didn't know and honestly I wanted to say something but then you're in Texas and yes. everybody in Oklahoma where everybody packs a gun on them I, it right. just you go there I but I was it's interesting I told my mom that story and she's like well you know Matthew people are they're he was older he doesn't really know what he's saying and my mom's and I said but mom would he said that if my boyfriend was in the car mm -hmm. and she looked at me and she said you know, you're right. And I saw a little bit of a spark. And I think that's what it's helpful is just for pe when people know someone that is different than them and they connect the dots and make it personal, mm -hmm. it often changes. That would be so much more helpful in our political spectrum right now. If people got to know people of other differences it, and it would change their empathetic perspective tremendously. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. As long as they agree with me, then that that's the whole thing. You got it, Carl. It's always, you got to agree with the gays or we're never going to go away. That's my, my philosophy. So. We do. We are, you know, that's just in our DNA. It is, it is. But I, you know, it is one of those moments. And, you know, now that I live here on the central coast, it's a little bit different than Southern California. And there are moments I'm like, okay, is this cool? Is this safe? And yeah, I don't, do you feel safe there? Yeah, I feel safe here. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. It's it's a pretty cool space. There's definitely some, you know, other perspectives. There's definitely some Trumpsters out here tooting their Trumpy horns. But um, for the most part, I feel safe. Yeah. And I feel good. I feel like I can stand and still be who I am and not go, okay, something bad is going to happen. You know, exactly. there's other areas of the country that I would like your, you know, I'm getting ready to go to Dallas for a conference. And it's been a while since I've been there. Now, granted, I'm going to be contained in the Lowe's Anatole Hotel, but mm -hmm. I'm sure I will venture out to the Rainbow Land at some point while I'm there. And, you know, oh. I, I haven't been there in years. And so I'm not sure how I will show up other than to be myself, which is typically how I do. But mm -hmm. you're right. You kind of get those moments and go, hmm, how do I want to be here? Do I want to say yeah. something? Do I not want to say something? You know, and to your question about here, I will say we went to see... Um, we were standing in line at the movies. It was when Love, Simon had just come out. We'd already seen it, but we were going to see something else. And two guys in front of us, there was two guys and then a lady and then us. And the two guys were obviously going to see, I don't know, Avengers or I don't know, one of the sci-fi kind of movies at that point in time. And they said, well, I suppose we could, if we can't get down, we could go see, you know, that Love, Simon thing and watch gay men kissing each other. And the woman right in front of us said, well, <laughs> And none of us wants to see that. And it was one of those moments where I was like, okay, how do I want to be here? Mm. Do I want to say something? Do I not? And what I found for myself, it wasn't a back down moment. It was, this is being shown to me right now so that I can think, how would I respond to something similar? I need mm -hmm. to go home. I need to hold this for a minute and go, mm -hmm. okay, how would I better respond if it happened again? Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad I did that because, girl, <laughs> I'm one of those queens that I can go off in a heartbeat. So I'm learning, like, okay, girl, slow down, breathe in, take a sip of sweet tea, and then move And, then, and yes. then, so how, so I'm interested, how would you have responded in that moment? And now that you thought about it, what would be different about your response? I don't know that I would actually even respond, except what I would say is, you know, my husband and I are standing right next to each other. I think I would have said loud enough to be heard. 
I'm really excited that this theater is showing Love, Simon, because the more people can see that gay is okay, the better the planet will be. And leave it at that. Wouldn't even have been directed at them. I would have turned to my husband and said, oh, I'm so glad they're showing this. It's really cool because I think mm -hmm. it's great for people to see that gay is okay. Mm -hmm. Not directed at the people, just okay. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes when we can do that, it's not avoiding the confrontation because there's times I'll dive right in. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. hold on. Let me get my spark little sequin gloves on and then we're ready to go, girl. But um, I, I do think there's moments, especially given where we are in this mm -hmm. particular political climate, that we need to give some room to, okay, maybe I need to listen so I can really hear you. It doesn't change my perspective necessarily, but let me hear you. Let me get to understand you a little bit better so that I can then respond better. Mm -hmm. that's, a different, that's for me something that's coming up. So Yeah, for sure. Now, what about in the Central Coast? Sorry, Sugar, I know it's your show. I'm interested. No, in no, no, no. This what is the sort of stuff I want to talk about. Yeah. Because it's so interesting to me. I'm always walking the line. You know, you and I come from a perspective of that no one knows necessarily our, uh, our minority status unless we wear a shirt with a rainbow flag on it, maybe. Yeah. Or, well, for me, if I open my mouth, because, you know, that purse falls out. It's like a Tory Burch <laughs> girl. Exactly. But so it's interesting where... We've been the majority because we're white men. We're kind of yes. at the top of the quote yes. unquote food chain. Yep. And then so now we've really, you know, that was, a, that was traumatic in itself just for me being mm -hmm. white. So yep. then now, so because my boyfriend and I talk about this kind of stuff for him being black and being queer and black, gay and yep. black. Yep. Yep. So what is like, what do you feel like is the diversity from not, uh, from uh, racial diversity and like with immigration, how is the central coast <clears throat> do you feel safe in those ways? It's an interesting space. Um, <clears throat> so Central Coast in California, for those who don't know this, is very much farm country. A lot of agriculture. Yeah, I'm asking this because I think a lot of people <clears throat> think, oh, San Francisco, L.A. Right, San right. Francisco's all a beautiful, loving yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, place. So then you get here to the Central Coast, and diversity in and of itself is interesting because there doesn't seem to be a lot. I can tell you that my daughter's college, um, less than 1%. Uh, the students are brown. Mm. So that That's tells you a whole lot. California, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 20 some thousand students, less than 1% of them are brown, less than 1% of them are LGBTQ, which that's not as shocking to me, but in, you know, some of the bigger, you know, people would think, mm -hmm. oh, California, all the, you know. Um, there's not a lot of black people in this town. Mm -hmm. I can, you know, it's interesting. They have what's called market night. And market night is Thursday nights. They close off about eight blocks of the central downtown area, which is, you know, it's a main street. This is a cozy little town. I love it. I can literally probably walk through market night and count the brown people on my hands. Wow. Yeah. However, you go a little bit north, you go a little bit south. And because of all the agriculture and the farm communities, then you start to get the migrant workers. Mm -hmm. So it becomes totally different. You go an mm -hmm. hour, about an hour and a half north of here to King City, and it's all farmland, and it's a huge Hispanic population because they all work in the fields. Mm. So it's very interesting to be here and know, okay, we're very progressive in this little community here, but there are these things that are missing, mm -hmm. like, the, like a good Chinese restaurant, honey. So when you guys come to visit... <laughs> Can you please? I would give anything for some really good orange chicken right now. As I'm telling you, it's like, oh, I mean, you know, it's pretty bad when you go, yes, I will drive to Chinatown in LA just two and a half, three hours to have a good. Chinatown. You're like, I'll just settle for a PF Chang's, please. Well, honey, okay, so it's, it's really sad. And okay, I'm going to go someplace that some people are like, what do you mean? But it, it is really sad when, um, what's the fast food one? Not PF Chang's. Panda so, Express. Thank you. When that's got five star reviews, <laughs> girl. Yeah, but no, uh, that's not Yelp. That's help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amen to that, girl. But you know, it is. It's an interesting space, and I love it. It's a beautiful. I mean, but there, there are other. There are other cultures. There's Indian mm -hmm. people. There's Muslims. I mean, I've seen all of it. It's just not as prevalent. Now, having said that. If you took the amount of the population and then looked at the numbers, it probably isn't far off percentage wise because of how small the population is. But I still believe it's it's really lacking. 
You know? And are the people, because there's a difference in, yes, you always, you want to, it's nice to have diversity, but also, you know, sometimes diversity can be lacking, but people could be educated and their, their I feel like in perspective this area, is open. Yeah, their perspective is open. Very much. Oh, that's good. Because that's yeah. real. That's the huge. Yeah. yeah. So that's the thing. Don't you think that this is the <coughs> this is the thing? Excuse me. There's there's that cough that you know is going to show up, and there's no way for me to edit this. But sugar. Uh, that's why is. you tell your husband before a show, like mm -mm, I'm spitting. I can't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> no throat coat before okay. a show, girl. Oh, I just make sure y'all got that reference. <laughs> if not rewind. Listen. Rewind. Listen. Eventually, it will soak in. So. <laughs> Because we can talk about this stuff on a podcast. Or land on your face, wherever. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and I always make sure when you come to podcasts, you make sure you have your hanky with you for crying yeah, out loud. You do. You just like you go into church. You gotta have the <laughs> hanky with you. You know. <laughs> Especially when you go into church in Oklahoma. My God, I, I'd have a whole packet of hankies by the time I got through the first song. I was like, I need to go get some more handkerchiefs. It's so hot and humid here. It is. Woo, it's, it's true. It's, but uh, it, it's so interesting to see all this stuff happening because if we take the time to start letting some of this be interesting and humorous and not so polarized, I wonder what we can do as communities. Oh, That's yeah. the biggies. And oh, I'm yeah. sitting there and I'm going, you're such a fucking hypocrite right now. <laughs> yes, I know, because there are days I'm like, oh, this is bullshit. But I'm learning, and maybe this is, you know, good Lord, God bless her, always is handing you lessons to learn. And I'm like, girl, you have those lessons to learn on, like, high speed right now for the last 18 months or whatever it's been since, you know, who has been in the office. But, mm -hmm. um, so what's it like in Oklahoma these days as far as that? Is it really what we think, or do you see much more diversity happening there, too? I mean, I don't live there anymore, but just right. from going back there, um, it's it's not – you know, very, like my cousin is a realtor and she was talking about, she owns a lot of rental properties and she was saying how she said, yeah, I realized in our neighborhood, it was time to sell the house. And I said, why? She said, because if people, because uh, several Muslim people started moving in that neighborhood and uh, several Mexican people started moving in that neighborhood. And I knew that we weren't going to be able to get renters anymore because wow. sure enough, my friend, and she said, and I knew just this is why I needed to sell my rental property. And she mm -hmm. said, sure enough, my other realtor friends who own property said they, their places were open for six months, could not get rented. Wow. So there, there is, I mean, I mean, but it's interesting for, I think both of us in that we have one foot in probably the most conservative state in the United mm -hmm. States right now. And then yep. another foot in probably the most liberal. Yep. Yep. So, and and I'm grateful for that perspective because on both sides, because I'll see, you know, I get annoyed by my, I really, I don't try to use the words liberal and conservative for me anymore because right. those are such polarizing words. Yep, and yep, um, I when I look, I get just as annoyed by the clickbait headlines that CNN is so terrible about mm -hmm. right now yep, yep. that I feel like I pretty much just stick to like NPR and that or Apple news. And that's it mm -hmm. really just because I feel like, uh, you know, I'll go see it and I'll read a headline and I'll start to get pissed off, you oh, exactly. know, and exactly. then I click on that article and I went, well, that's not really, that's not what, really what they're saying. <clears throat> right. And so it's just, it's, it's feeding on both sides. It's, it's feeding into that. But I definitely mm. feel like, you know, they just passed the anti-adoption thing in Oklahoma. So you mean, so you mean that clickbait headline that says Prince Harry has a twin redhead brother that lives in LA that really wasn't sugar. You know, I clicked on that shit immediately. <laughs> I said, I put, I opened it in Chrome and Safari. <laughs> you wanted to make sure. Because if you're going to be pictured, you want to make sure you look good. I went to Snopes to validate that <laughs> shit, girl. You know what I did. I'm so glad you're bringing all this up because, <laughs> I mean, I caught myself a few times. I'm like, okay, wait, this, this cannot be, you know, and now I use Snopes and I do all that stuff because it's like, wait, let's make sure we're getting this because even though I hate to admit it, fake news is becoming a norm. Yeah, but yes. And, but I think it's just, we're in this society now where um, I think that the thing that irks me a lot about some family members, hell, sometimes my own mother mm -hmm. and even uh, who's quote unquote, who really lived, she likes to hold onto that word conservative and they happen to live in a more liberal Texas town, which I kind of think is great for them. Hopefully one day they'll open their mind and not, change their mind, but at least mm -hmm. have a new perspective instead of just saying, Oh, that's liberal. We don't want yeah. that. Um, 
and vice and vice versa. That's conservative. We don't want that. But for you know, it's uh, it it's very people are still very very stuck, very stoic, and not um, you know, it's just they are set up to. They're just, I mean, I think it just boils down to is people weren't ready for a black president. They Mm -hmm. just weren't, we weren't ready. Oh yeah. No, uh, I have so much of that. I've heard so much of that from high school friends of mine who live in Texas uh, and and have since we've like totally parted ways because I'm like, no, 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 no. I can't, I can't do this with you. First of all, I I haven't even talked to you in 20 years. So then you suddenly start doing this and then you want me to engage. I'm like, "Ah, I don't have, I don't have the energy, you know? So I just yeah, I just don't think we're ready. And Oklahoma yeah. is a deeply, <clears throat> deeply, deeply racist state, and so not it's everyone, done. not but everyone, it's change, yeah. but it's changing. Yeah, because I've had a lot of people that have come out, you know, because of this whole. A lot of people have come out with the LGBT marriage that that Mary that that Governor Mary Fallon's uh, signed mm-hmm. that won't let queer people, LGBT people, adopt. I've had a lot of people feel like that's ridiculous and they don't understand that. Yeah. So, yeah. But, or maybe all these people on social media have unfollowed me. So I don't see their shit anymore. I don't well, know. That could be it. And, and you know, that's okay. Cause it makes room for those who do want to see your shit to see it. So that's exactly. how I always look at it. You know, I mean, I keep telling Facebook, I need 30,000, please. I need 30,000 friends because I'm so popular when really I only need a thousand. <laughs> it just makes me feel good on those mornings when I wake up. Okay. like. Oh, girl, do I have to go do this shit again? I go, but you need 30,000 Facebook friends. Okay, I'm good. I'm back up. You know, we're off to the races again. But um, but to your point, here's something as you were talking about having one foot in and one foot out, which I thought we were going to do the hokey pokey when you started saying that. But mm-hmm. I feel blessed to have had the experience of having my foot in the South mm-hmm. because every day it helps me see things in a different way. What gives you empathy? Yeah, it really does. I yeah, mean, I feel very sure. empathetic when somebody else says, oh, I can't find a good fried green tomato. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we live in California. They don't have good barbecue. Hello. Uh, have good but, barbecue. but in all seriousness, it does help me go, okay, I, I lived in that life. And it was interesting, Maddie, because we moved from California back home. My, so my home state is Colorado. We were there for a few years, and then I actually started high school in Arkansas. So that began mm. the whole, like, you know, little sojourn through the Southern Bible Belt for years for me. And coming from California, Colorado, with parents who were hippies, created our own way of needing to be accepted. Mm-hmm. You know, I, and so I went to a, I went to Seventh Day Adventist schools, which we <laughs> well, that will go over when we have wine together. That's a whole that, other that, show, that, bitch. That, yeah, that's a whole other thing. But I remember I was just sharing this with somebody else the other day. I remember walking into the first like week of prayer event that we do at our schools, and the principal actually walking up to my father and saying, "You know, you're you're going to have to leave, and <clears throat> he can't participate." until he gets his hair cut because Christian boys don't wear their hair below their collar. And that still sticks out in my mind mm. as this was the first time I started going, the world can be a very unfriendly place, mm-hmm. but it's who I choose to be. That's mm-hmm. going to help. And even at 14, 14, yeah, it was when I was in high school. Um, <clears throat> I remember that being that first time. Going, okay. I'm in an experience here. And as I went through, I wasn't out. I came out when I was in college and went back in, but it was all happening in that Southern Bible Belt. And I'm so glad I had the experience because now, <clears throat> well, now because of what I do, when I <laughs> when the phone rings, it's like, oh, Texas, Oklahoma, Missouri. I'm going cha-ching. I just got a client, you know, because mm-hmm. they're they're in a space where they're like, I don't know how to do this. And I don't know how to do this here. And for most of them, it's because there's very deep-rooted faith-based stuff along with the deep-rooted social constructs. Mm-hmm. So there's mm-hmm. so much to work through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's. it really is. I, I was raised Catholic, and honestly, I'm not anymore, but mm-hmm. in the middle of evangelical and Protestant, you know, it was called St. Mary's. Yep, so yep. I honestly, and I was very effeminate, please. I mean, musical theater, loved Wonder Woman. I mean, I was gay, gay all day and had a, a really terrible lisp. I mean, you could swim in it. So, but I was made fun and bullied more 
about my religion than I was about my sexuality. And it true people telling me that I wasn't Christian enough or that I didn't worship Jesus. I wasn't mm -hmm. washed in the blood, which I thought was gross. I didn't want blood right. on me. Exactly. And so that was, and I see it now in the perspective, you know, we're in an opioid crisis in our country, but I never realized, um, I luckily I've never been addicted to anything. Well, except for, you know, that dick girl, that dick. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. I, uh, I there, is, there is no cure for that. You there do. is no cure for that. Mm -hmm. um, but there is, uh, when I was getting my master's, I ran a crystal, a men's crystal meth recovery group. Wow. And that was so enlightening to me just as a gay man, as, uh, as someone, just what it's like working with people struggling with addiction. But then when I went back for Christmas that year to Oklahoma, I went, oh, my God everyone so many people are, are mm -hmm. using meth here and you see and it is they're in a total meth crisis now my yeah. brother works on yeah. the sheriff's department and talks about it but what gets me about that that again i'm so grateful as well that i was, was gay and it opened me up in my empathy for people is sure. that sure. it's so funny that i'm the one that relates to these quote unquote as people call them drug addicts i don't mm -hmm. call them that but i'm the one that re relates to the quote unquote drug addicts more than the the, even though they're straight, then the other straight, quote unquote, Christian sure. people, because I see that people often use in the South, well, he just needs to find Jesus and he'll get off that, off that bad <clears throat> juice. And yep. they really, they don't equivocate the disease part of addiction. And they really right. equivoc feel like if you just find religion, so it's Everything this whole, gets fixed. what we realize is being gay, that it's this whole moral that you, because mm -hmm. you're going to go to hell now for doing drugs. I mean, right. whoa, when did this? So it's such a level of empathy. It's sad. It makes me very sad because I feel like the only way if I ever moved back to Oklahoma, I would just have to be like a raging homosexual activist only to go to sleep. Like I would have to start like a yep. Southern Oklahoma gay and lesbian center with a big ass flag and Judy yeah. Garland. But mm -hmm. like there's, I think that's the only way I could do it to tip the balance and feel like I wasn't being suffocated in a lot of ways, honestly. Now, you know, you'd have to open that center in an Airstream trailer. With a big old pink, you know, big old pink no. stiletto on top it of probably, it. And it's, probably a barbed wire fence around it. Exactly. That's what I was going to say, you, you know, because then it's like, okay, you, you don't need to put us in fences. We're already in it. So go exactly. away. Bye-bye. Go we away. Go. Yeah. So. Let us do it. Oh, that's so true, man. But, you know, it is interesting to have gone through so much of this. And then just here we sit. And this is where we are in these times and wonder, okay, do we do this? Do we not? And thus kind of brings us full circle as to why we would want to come out and be the next gay white Oprah, because think if we had those voices like she does, if we can yeah. really continue to impact it. And I know for me, and I know for you that doing our podcasts, this is part of the way we do this by bringing oh, yeah. these voices, bringing this humor. And of course, you, you know, we got to continue to bring forward that Dick is the only way. So, it's you know, we true. just, we just, you know, we don't yeah, want anybody to forget that, you know. I promise y'all. It's, <laughs> it's um, but no, I, I wish think, I wish you could have seen. We're, we can see each other on video, so it makes it so much funnier. But probably it, yeah. better yeah. that you don't. But yeah, there exactly. is this, you know, Carol Burnett's one of my favorite comedians, and she, uh, she's a great writer. I recommend people reading her books. But one of her books, she says her grandmother always said that comedy is just tragedy plus time. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, and especially in the South, that's something we, we've had a lot of tragedy of the South. And a lot of that comes back from having either people were in, were slaves or people's towns or families were wiped out in the civil war. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's this cultural thing that we have that no matter what it is, we can rise above it by, by kind of ribbing, ribbing each other and laughing mm -hmm. about it. And that's still the way my family is to this day, but it's that, for me, it's the the choice of not that I'm not dealing with something, but that I'm choosing to not just cry about it, but also to laugh about it. Mm -hmm. So then it brings in choice. And I think that's, as I know with the therapist and as you know with with coaching clients, it's yeah. a lot of people come to us often and they feel like they don't even have a choice. And it's just for us just opening that perspective of choice to them. Mm-hmm. In fact, I'm so glad you said that because I just said this to a client yesterday or no, it's yesterday it was Sunday. See, I was obviously in my line cups because I can't remember what, yes, <laughs> what day I said, uh, you, know, you know, but we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that when you guys come up and drink wine with us. But I did say to a client last week, how would you 
like to laugh about this. Mm. And he got really quiet and he goes, I'm not sure what you mean. I said, if you could laugh about what is going on right now, how could you do that? Mm. And it was a really powerful moment. That's because, a really good question. Because it's like, wait, you mean I can laugh about this? I'm like, yes, let's make, let's make this funny. How can we make this funny? Even in the most tragic thing, if you can find that space to find some humor, mm -hmm. some little glimpse of a laugh, even if it's just a little bitty giggle, you know, mm -hmm. how can you make that worth it? Mm -hmm. Because in those moments, I feel like, you know, I'm not a, I'm not one of those people who's like, okay, it's going to release the serotonin or whatever it is. But there's those moments that when you can shift that, then you begin to see things clearer in a different mm -hmm. perspective, which is really what it's all about. The moment you can see something from a different perspective, you can embrace it. You can love it. You can respect it. You can be empathetic to it. Mm -hmm. But it's one of those things that I think we miss so often as human beings is what can we laugh at? Even if we yeah. want to cry, what piece of this can we laugh at? Yeah. You know, I recently just, a friend just said to me, she's going through like a money course and stuff like that. And she just said, uh, cause I'm okay at money, but it, I grew up with a lot of, my parents grew up poor. They yeah. made they made decent money and raised us very. We never wanted for anything, but we still. I grew up kind of with almost that almost poor mindset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, my father went to bed. I mean, they would eat dinner maybe once a week. So mm. I mean, he really grew up poor, and that's traumatic. Honestly. Yes. Um, and that, in a way, was it's like someone who's an alcohol son or daughter of someone struggling with alcoholism. Right, right. Your mindset can think like that in a lot of ways. And so she just said to me, "This is just this morning." She said, "When you think about money, she said, do you love it or do you hate it? Do you when you what's your initial instinct?" And I was like, "Oh, when I think about money, I'm kind of like, ugh, money." Right. And I literally, she said, "You literally just pushed it away. Mm. You literally just pushed mm -hmm. money away." She's like, "And that's such an energetic law. You really need to love it. You need to." think of it as like a, one of your best friends that you get to see again. Mm -hmm. And that sounds whatever. It might sound silly to some people, but for me, it really resonated. No, it totally really does. switched the perspective of not just with finances, but you know, for somebody dealing with divorce or someone dealing with whatever angst is in life. Can I look at this is, is almost like a hug instead of something coming to hit me. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why I sat there yesterday, wine tasting girls and I just love the money I have to <laughs> Let's do this. Hello. <laughs> hallelujah. Sunday. So, you know, you're like money, money. I don't get too shit. Yeah, I don't either. It's like, they're good. if they're stupid enough to pour me this wine and give it to me for that price, hell, I'm all, I'm all in. I'm um, all in. And I'll be back tomorrow, which actually I'll be back in about another 30 minutes or so. But, uh, <laughs> uh, let's, uh, buddy, I'm so glad. And you know, I don't call him buddy, but you know, I'm saying buddy, like, you know, actually I'm going to do what he'd say. Sugar, it's so glad that you came on the show today because you know, that sweet tea, we should have been drinking sweet tea the whole freaking time. You do we know. should, I was drinking a Dr. Pepper, which is pretty Southern. Oh, okay. That's pretty Southern. Yeah. My grandma would make Dr. Pepper cake when we were kids. Oh, I love Dr. Pepper cake. I do too. Mm, the best. That's mm. good shit. And then when you're poor, you put Dr. Pepper in just about anything. We used yep. to make ketchup out of Dr. Pepper. I don't know if you ever did you that. You can. I haven't done that, but yes, you can. Yeah, you can, and it's actually, it's actually not bad. It's, it's not actually, bad. yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, well, in a pinch. <laughs> kind of like other things, in a pinch. In a pinch. <laughs> I don't like it if I have to pinch it to get a hold of it. You know? No. <laughs> that, mm, mm, no. I hope you all just got that reference too, but if not, I rewind, <laughs> listen. I was just staying quiet. I was letting it sink in for him. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Letting so, it sink in. Thank all right. You, thank you so much for having me on. Oh, of course, girl. Now, before we go, if there's something just burning that you just want to leave people with. Oh, I took a pill for that. It's fine now. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the comedian in him. He's so freaking quick. <laughs> yes, we all take pills. Oh, that's part of the LGBT way. We take pills for everything. And if you believe that, then I come over here and I slap the shit. Uh, but no, I, I, you know, I think, I mean, there's nothing really burning. And I think it's just, uh, you know, like you were saying earlier and, and talk, I, I, I just, you know what? I think the thing that kind of burning for me right now that I want people to do more is to really, is to have a, have a good conversation with someone who is not like you at all. Mm -hmm. I really just think that really something we, that everybody, myself included, yep. everybody needs to explore more and more. more. So more. with that, I'm going to share something that I'm working on <clears throat> that will probably shock a lot of people. 
but it is something that is that kind of reaching beyond. I'm actually working on a talk called The Things as a Gay Man I Have in Common with a Ku Klux Klan Member. Ooh, I love that. And I know some people can go, what the fuck are you talking? Just kind of, again, let that one sink in because there's some parallels. There are definitely some parallels of how we show up that we want to be accepted. We want to be heard. We want to mm-hmm. be understood. We have certain things that we do that people think are really weird. But in the end, there's probably a lot more commonality than what just first went through your minds when I said those words. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I'm trying to... um what well, you know, doing it's a TEDx talk. I so. love that. And I think just to add to that, people often believe if we understand someone, then that means we're going to believe in that. And mm-hmm. that is not the case. I can understand why Osama bin Laden did what he did. I understand it. I understand where his rationale came from. I understand that even though it is sick and it is demented and it is twisted, I understand knowing the community the desperate need and the pain and hurt that that community Mm -hmm. is going through in his country and his, or it was his country. But -hmm. at the same time, it doesn't make me validate that. In fact, I feel like it, when I understand, even if it is totally fucked up where someone's coming from, then often I can understand, I can gives me tools of how I can speak to them to hopefully change Mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So then they're not killing people or bullying or Mm -hmm. that's what I can help them understand. But again, we're so scared often, especially in this country of even just hearing someone out because we, we believe that that means that that means we're, we're validating their experience. We're not. Well, and I think that understanding comes from, we are stepping into a, well, no, we've always been here. We've always been here, but it seems to be heightened where we have stepped into a react versus respond mentality. Everything is a reaction. Everything has to happen. And and Mm -hmm. God bless his short little stubby fingers. He's a reactionary. And that's why this has become acceptable because let's just react. Let's just do this. Mm -hmm. And I hope the two little stubby fingers that are having conversations (laughs) right now as we're speaking, because this is happening while the summit between him and Kim Jong-un is going on, even though we will be beyond this when this airs, it just, it's scary to know that we've become a society of reaction. When we can I, I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna change. I mean, if we I don't do get too, blown up, in, yeah. if we don't get blown up in a nuclear war, I think that Donald. Well, honey, just remember, we're only two and a half hours north. So as soon as you know the missile's coming, hop in your car, get up here. We'll just go sit out in the vineyard and have one last good old bottle of wine. And... Yeah, it's true. Elon must get that train built so I can get yes. up there quick. <laughs> Jesus, but Jesus. I, I think yeah, I really do believe. I think he's gonna be that 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 horrible man is going to be one of the best things that ever happened to our country. I agree. And I really believe that there's going to be a change in that. I and, agree. I uh, agree. I think there's going to be something bigger than any of us see. And I hope I'm right. So you just, you just do your little Catholic cross there and I'll just do, well, I don't do anything anymore. Either, you don't so. know anything. Anymore. Well, actually I, I do. Don't, I, I, don't I, I pretty much spend every morning, Sunday morning, in St. Mattress. So, you know, there with, you go. With, you know, a penis. So yeah, there we yeah, go. yeah. That's mandatory now mm-hmm. on Sunday morning. Some so. people take communion. You take <laughs> uncut cock. That's fine. That's fine. And that's I fine. think with that, that's a good place to <laughs> call it. Well, we're not going to cut it off because that's that would serve no purpose. Yeah, that said, tweet me, y'all. Want to hear from you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, sugar snap. I can't wait to see you soon, and especially yeah. podcast yeah. movement and whenever. And um, thanks for just sharing yourself and being totally. And I think you're going to be on my show soon. Don't we have that schedule? I think so. We're okay. doing this. At, we're yes, you all. We're doing this again in just a few days. So um, yes, you can get double doses of us both. Of us, and if you want, you can just That's keep rewinding, rewinding, you, rewinding and listening a, over. A nice DP of Gay White Oprah. Exactly. And the thing is, is the rewind with podcasts is fabulous because if it's you fabulous. didn't get to hear it the first time, you can go do it again. So and we're uh, going to make sure that uh, we're going to make sure that everybody, whenever you post this, is when I'll post my episode so we'll be on okay. the same week there we go so we'll, we'll just, just be fabulous fabulous look, fabulous. look so. in the show notes and yeah. they can click on my show and then notes. all of a sudden the whole internet will be alive with maddie and rick and they're going where did yeah. these two come from and then before you know it oprah will be going i need those girls on my network and then we have the problem solved we're done we don't yeah, need to create done. our own so all right sugar snap good talking to you thanks so much have a fabulous day bye-bye
All right, there you have it. Another episode of Life Uncloseted has come to an end, but that's okay. We're going to be back in just a couple of days sharing more stories, tips, tricks, and wisdom for helping you live your life uncloseted. And you know what? You can share it too. Just take a few moments if you like and if you believe in this podcast and share it with someone you know today. Share it from your phone, go share it on iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you are. Maybe even give us a rating review because you know what? It's all about the planet living their life uncloseted. I'm Rick Clemens, host of the show and the guy who helps you make those big, bold moves. And I hope you never stop stepping out, stepping up, and stepping in to living your life uncloseted. Catch you real soon. Take care, everyone.